This episode of Internet Today is brought to you by Purple. Apes together strong. God damn it. <laughs> that has been one of the many rallying cries of the Wall Street Bets subreddit that took off in popularity during the month of January. A month that turned a humble little subreddit, which made the stock market look like a casino, and where the most upvoted links typically consisted of screenshots of unthinkable losses, turned that subreddit into one of the most popular forums on the site, with nonstop, round-the-clock coverage from news outlets and social media feeds either praising these retail investors for sticking it to the man or uh, demeaning them for uh, creating insane volatility in the markets. Why not both? Uh, in the these, case of uh, Jim Cramer, it seemed to be both. These are not mutually uh, exclusive things. Yes. Uh, anyway, yeah, things did eventually calm down a little bit over on Wall Street Bets when the GameStop stock along with other meme stocks that were being pumped as a way to destroy hedge fund short positions, seemed to have reached their pinnacles and rapidly started to fall back to earth, mm -hmm. bottoming out through most of February and remaining at a price point of around $40, $50 per share for GameStop. Uh, the, main, the mainstream coverage had left everyone behind, and it looks like a bunch of diamond hand having Redditors might have been left holding the bag yep. in their diamond hands. <laughs> yeah. uh, something changed in more recent weeks, though, as... GME has, once again, soared beyond anyone's expectations, reaching upwards of $260 a share earlier this week, and once again, providing insane returns to anyone who had purchased that stock anywhere near outside of uh, these all-time highs. Yeah, even people who, like, when it, when it got down to, like, 50, it's like, okay, this is still overvalued considering yeah. where it was last year, but uh, who knows where it'll go? And then now it's like, okay, yeah, you would have, like, quintupled your money if you had bought it at 50. We need to reopen America. This shit's getting out of hand. <laughs> but uh, what should this community of newfound traders uh, do with all of the money, which as far as anybody knows, came from screwing over rich and powerful people? Uh, for some, it meant paying off things like student debt, medical bills, mortgage payments for parents and grandparents. Uh, typical dream goals for anyone lucky enough to experience a financial windfall at some point in their life. Mm -hmm. Now, we're sure that there was also plenty of money thrown around on extremely lavish items like fancy cars, property, vacations, and, and so on. But the majority of what we've seen posted has been, dare we say, responsible. And respectable. Yeah. And in the past week or so, as the stock has once again skyrocketed towards the moon, the members of the Wall Street Pets community have come together to collectively put their newfound fortune behind a noble cause. Because once again, apes together strong. <laughs> <laughs> so, they've decided to rally behind the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund International, which uses their fundraising to not only protect endangered mountain gorillas from poachers, but also help local communities provide funding for scientific research on gorillas and educate people regarding these majestic beasts. Yeah, in just over a week, the Wall Street Bets subreddit put down their tendies and raised over $300,000 for this organization through donations and, in particular, Symbolic adoption, where they're able to adopt specific gorillas that the organization protects and, you know, be provided with a certificate of adoption afterwards, which lists their name or the name of an organi organization that they represent on, mm -hmm. which has, of course, resulted in some pretty interesting gorilla adoption paperwork being shared online. Uh, here's some examples. The Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund International gratefully acknowledges GameStop for the adoption of Mountain Gorilla Orangano. The Gorilla Fund gratefully acknowledges Jim Cramer's tears for the adoption of Mountain Gorilla Ishimwe. And of course, the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund International gratefully acknowledges Fuck Melvin Capital's adoption <laughs> of Mountain Gorilla Segasira. Oh my god. Um, yeah, so for their part, the organization has, of course, fully embraced this meme and welcomed their new benefactors with open arms, providing constant updates on their official Twitter page and adding the term Apes Together Strong to the front page of their actual website and also releasing uh, a thank you video directed at Wall Street Bets from President and CEO of Gorilla Fund, Tara Stowinski. Hi, Wall Street Bets. My name is Tara Stowinski. I'm the President and CEO of the Diane Fossey Gorilla Fund. And I was just made aware that you have been adopting gorillas through our website. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for this incredible support. In case you're not familiar with us, we are the world's largest and longest running organization that is fully dedicated to gorilla conservation. Every day, 365 days a year, we are in the field protecting the world's remaining gorillas and also helping the people who share their forest home. So thank you again so much for your support. It will go a long way in helping our important mission. I can't hate. I know, it's this great. Is a, it's this fantastic. is a, a genuinely good thing. Yeah, uh, it's like, uh, 
uh, when Dogecoin has been going up and down and up and down, but when it first hit its huge rise, yeah. which was also in late January, uh, people were donating to humane societies and stuff like that, basically saying, let's save dogs. Yeah, and I, I especially, like, if you know anything about Diane Fossey, which you might not, she's been dead for a long time. Mm-hmm. They made a movie about her a long time ago starring uh, Sigourney Weaver as her. But uh, I feel like there is some parallels between Diane Fossey's life and the sort of uh, Wall Street Bets community uh, in the fact that, like, Diane Fossey just, like, lost, she went, like, full on, she was motivated purely by spite in mm-hmm. later years of her life, just, like, anger that anyone would fuck with gorillas yeah. just like going out of her way to basically become a warlord in Africa and she ended up getting murdered for it but she did it because she believed in it uh, fuck it to the moon uh, so now full circle she held those gorillas in her diamond hands yes and she knew it might cost her her life and it did but uh, you know it's about the principle she's not going to let those hedge funds or poachers uh, tell her what to do and that's what's happening here yeah a community the has, same thing. has, has <laughs> Surrounded this organization and just flushed them with cash. Does this have anything to do with, like, is this Harambe coming back? Um, I'm sure that that still weighs heavy on people's minds, as it should with anyone. <laughs> yeah. You know, all these months cooped up at home. I just, it's hard to keep Harambe off my mind. I mean, in Things a lot really of ways. really changed once Harambe was killed. In a so. lot of ways, Harambe was lucky to leave this earth before everything went to hell. I'm actually surprised that... Uh, at one of the, at like the, I think it's, yeah, it's Animal Kingdom, Disney in Orlando. Yeah. Their, like, preserve is called the Harambe Preserve or something. I'm surprised they haven't changed that yet. Well, I mean, like, why would they? I don't it's know. It's very respectful. I guess so, yeah. From what I hear, though, a- animals at zoos have been having a great time. Like, finally, some There's peace that, They uh, gave the vaccine to the gorillas down in uh, San Diego, I believe. I oh, oh, whoa. I guess, uh, I guess those gorillas, they must, uh. Have a pre-existing condition or something, because I'm still sitting over here. No shots and no no arms. No track marks here. Anyway, yeah, Yeah. this whole thing, it's great. It has the added bonus of keeping the subreddit way up on the moral high ground above (laughs) the hedge funds and institutions that are targeting these uh, stock rallies and short squeezes. So uh, congrats to Wall Street Bets for the contributions to noble causes and the continued source of entertainment for everyone watching from the sidelines as you continue to fuck with the stock market and set up shop rent-free in the heads of CNBC anchors and talking heads. Yeah. Plus, as a bonus, it should go without saying that they also contributed heavily to the arts thanks to their meme stock buying frenzy that essentially bailed out AMC theaters when they needed it the most, mm-hmm. while facing a steep uphill climb after the coronavirus pandemic forced them to close their doors for up to a year in some places. Well, now we're slowly coming out of our caves, blinded by the light. Oh. Facing the world again, people are being vaccinated, and numbers are dropping low enough to allow for reopenings in even the strictest areas. Like Southern California, where AMC Theaters has opened its doors to an eager public for the first time in many, many months, so that people can sit inside and watch a movie the way it was meant to be seen, on the big screen with a thunderous sound system and a bucket of popcorn. Man, you know who would love that movie theaters are finally open once again? Pee Wee Herman? No. <laughs> I don't know if they closed the porn theaters. Uh, that man did nothing wrong. Yeah. He was doing what you do in a porn theater, jerking off. Yeah, he, he followed the instructions. I <laughs> uh, no, I'm talking, of course, about Christopher Nolan. Oh! Yes. Whose uh, masturbatory habits in a normal theater are heretofore Christopher Nolan's mas- unknown. Christopher, Christopher Nolan's masturbation is purely intellectual yes. and, and cinema, cine, cinematographic yes. mastur- masturbation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's... Uh, He's the one that's first through the door over at the AMC. Uh, of Our course, local AMC. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course, you'll remember Tenet was the film that risked it all at the tail of last summer, and it was released in whatever theaters were open so that people didn't have to watch it on their shitty, tiny, microscopic 70-inch screens. Yeah, or on their toilets or baby thermometers or I love toasters. That. Someone put it on, like, the, the Shrek TV, <laughs> like CRT TV. <laughs> someone put it on... As a, intended. Someone created a Game Boy Advanced cartridge of it. Mm-hmm. It runs at, like like half a frame a second and you know the the color palette on the Game Boy Advance quite limited it's uh probably not the ideal way to watch someone it, watched but... our show on a toilet yeah i saw that that was cool yeah yeah anyway it just so happens that Christopher Nolan himself was literally one of the first customers back in theaters at our local cinema yeah. the AMC Burbank 16 a little local talk here, but not to be confused with literally the two other AMC Burbanks that are within the same one mile radius. Not even a mile. It's like a quarter mile radius. You haven't lived in LA until you've gone to the wrong AMC Burbank and been like, 
Fuck, I'm late. Wait, what do you mean it's not this theater? I'm in Burbank. This is AMC. What? It's Oh, it's only a half mile away. Oh, but the way the streets are set up is not pedestrian friendly, so I do have to, in fact, get in my fucking car and drive around the block. Great. Yes. Is it the one that's uh, underneath the Crunch Fitness next to the Barnes & Noble? Is it the one that's on the third completely desolate floor of a mall? Yeah. Or is it the one that uh, is in fr- right next to the Buffalo Wild Wings? Yeah. <laughs> because they're literally, you can see every single one from the other one. Yeah, you can see them. They're hard to get to. And two of them suck. Yeah. yeah. There's only the one good one. I, well, the one that's underground has a pretty cool bar, and they always have a movie-themed cocktail. I've never ordered it, but it's interesting. The There's 16 always... has the cocktails, too, at MacGuffin's. Yeah, that's true. I like the underground feel, though. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway. But, listen, one day we'll get back there and see if all three are still open. But for now, yeah. it's just this one, and this is the one that he went to. So, yeah. He went out there. He, he braved the human public and their disgusting germ-filled breath, And he showed us that it's probably, maybe, we shall see in a few weeks, (laughs) safe to enjoy a movie once again. It will be hilarious if he does end up getting a bad case of COVID-19 from this. Uh, I hope he doesn't, but it it would be hilarious. He he is, he's, he's the test subject. He's putting himself out there. He's risking it all to prove that it's fine. And, and, you know, once uh, scientists open up Christopher Nolan's tomb in two weeks and check and see if he contracted it, then we should know that it's safe. I mean, I wouldn't put it past Christopher Nolan that his uh, theatrical movies are so loud that the virus can't possibly survive in the air. The the air that's being pushed around by the subwoofers? <laughs> the sound pressure just yeah, it crushes eliminates the virus. the virus. But he is, at this point, he's like a cinematic groundhog. Yeah. You pull Christopher Nolan out to see if it's safe, and then everyone can go see a movie afterwards. Did he see his shadow? I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, as for what he saw, we haven't seen any confirmation regarding that, but um, it had to have either been The Crude, The New Age, or most likely the Oscar-nominated Promising Young Woman. But for fun, we're going to imagine that Christopher Nolan rushed out to go see The Crude. Yes. Ah, finally. (laughs) The way it was... Cinema is back. (laughs) The way it was intended to be seen. And it's so funny because, like, it is... It's in a... Literally, like, the only outdoor entertainment area in Burbank, California. Yeah. Kind of. So it's just, there's pictures of, like, fans of his in the elevator with him. Yeah. Like, the, his entire trip from the parking garage to the theater and back is, like, well documented. But, yeah. I mean, that's what you get. Yeah. For going outdoors in L.A. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, this also isn't the first time that he has made sure that he's seen, he's been seen at a theater reopening. Yeah. Uh, apparently went down to Orange County last September when Regal Cinemas reopened a location in the city of Irvine. Oh, I've been to that theater a bunch as mm-hmm. a teen. Uh, is that at the, spe- at the Spectrum? Um, no. Hmm. No, it's in, uh, I believe, I believe it's, uh, God, I can't remember the name of it, but it's it's this absolutely absurdly large shopping center where you have to, like, you still have to drive to the different stores because the way it's it's laid out is, like, it's you can't Oh, is that where the Vans around. Skate Park is or something? Oh, I don't know about that. Right. Um, my, anyway. my knowledge of Orange County is limited to malls because when I first moved out here, that's like yeah, one of the first all, places I went. That's all we got. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I saw I, I saw a lot of movies at this specific theater yeah. too. So yeah, looks like Chris Nolan is a one-man cheer squad for making sure that people get back to the goddamn movie theaters. Yeah. Uh, although Tom Cruise, uh, another one. Yeah, he did it last summer flew, in Solidarity. Flew all the way to London. He's like, guys, it's safe. We got to go to the movies. I love the movies. I've been on the phone every single goddamn night with the studios trying to get this fixed, and you're coming over here fucking breathing. <laughs> you're on trying me. to ruin this for everyone. So many people's jobs are on the line. He he was trying to fuck it up. He wasn't wrong. He was just a bit aggressive about yeah, what he was doing. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, Christopher Nolan, this is his mission, and maybe it's not the best idea. I guess we'll see. But goddamn it, you can't question this man's passion for cinema and the movie-going experience. I no guess. one will ever question this ever again. That man loves movies. I love movies, goddammit. Yeah, he's willing to risk it all. And look, I, I saw pictures of the screenings. Cause like everyone was super excited. They fucking opened the doors and it was like it was like the morning at Disneyland trying yeah. people trying to get on a Star Wars ride. They were like, Oh god, the theaters are. All open. right, everybody, calm down. And I saw the pictures and look, I don't know how AMC's making money, but it looked safe because there was like ten people spread around a theater that holds two hundred. Yeah, it's probably fine. If you're lucky enough to get a ticket, I guess. Because I can't, I just, I look at it and I'm like, they're doing this to slowly bring it back. Yeah, they're trying to ease everyone back in. There's no way they're making money here. They got to be selling a lot of popcorn to make money here. 
So, like I said, I, they should check the A-list status and see what people are ordering, and then let them in. Yeah. This guy comes out every 15 minutes to get a new Jack and Coke from MacGuffins, and he needs to get let through. All right. Anyways, before we get into the rest of today's news, uh, let's take a quick second and make sure you're sleeping well. Uh, we inadvertently talk a lot about pillows on the show nowadays for very specific reasons. But hey, thanks to today's sponsor, Purple, you can make sure that you are getting the best sleep possible on the best pillow and mattresses. As the world becomes increasingly uncomfortable, we're all looking for as much comfort as we can get our hands on. We sit in computer chairs all day, me and Elliot, endlessly scrolling, editing, writing, so we know how it feels to be uncomfortable at the end of the day. But at least we can count on Purple for comfort when we go to bed. That's because Purple is comfort reinvented. Only Purple has The Grid, a stretchy gel material that's uh, amazingly supportive for your back and legs while cushioning your shoulders, neck, and hips. Uh, I don't know how it does it. It's just fantastic. Because of how it's designed, the grid doesn't trap air. Air actually circulates and flows through it, so you'll never overheat. Mm -hmm. The grid bounces back as you move and shift. And unlike memory foam, which remembers everything, yeah. uh, this stuff... It doesn't do that. It's it the ultimate you... in comfort. Yeah. Memory foam has craters and divots. This is... It's, it's really like sitting on a cloud. It mm -hmm. has a certain weightlessness and airiness to it that yeah. I've never felt in another pillow. We both got the pillows. They are fantastic. Uh, I have to part with mine whenever my wife comes to bed, but uh, it's that good. She you're gonna, it. The only thing you're going to wish you ordered more. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. It, we saw people on Twitter talking about like, hey, is that pillow worth it? And like, people who aren't us replied and were like, yes. Yeah. Got it. And you, we know a lot about pillows. We cover pillow news a lot. We so. are the pillow experts. Yeah. Anyways, right now you can try your uh, Purple mattress risk-free uh, with free shipping and returns. Financing is also available. Uh, purple is really uh, its comfort in an uncomfortable world. So look, check it out. Right now, you're going to get 10% off of any order of $200 or more. So go to purple.com slash todaydaily10 and use our promo code todaydaily10 to check out. Uh, that is purple.com slash todaydaily10, uh, promo code todaydaily10 for 10% off any order of $200 or more. That is purple.com slash todaydaily10, promo code todaydaily10. Check them out. Terms apply. And cool. Back to the news now. We regret to inform you that Elon Musk has made his own NFT, and it will almost certainly sell for an astronomical amount of money. Mm -hmm. What do you get, the richest man in the world? What do you get, the man who has More everything? More fucking money, I guess. Yeah. You fucking schmucks. So what's strange, though, is that he's not exactly selling the artwork or the song as a standalone NFT, but is instead selling the actual tweet that contains the animated artwork and techno song as the NFT. And yeah, but yes, just to, he, this is a song that apparently Elon Musk made. It's fucking garbage. Well, we, he uh, is known for his techno songs. He, yeah. he does like one a year. This one's even worse. Like the first one, like, don't doubt your vibe. It was trash, but that one at least had like a uniqueness to it. Like this one just feels extremely generic. Yeah. But, of course, you know, underneath the tweet, oh, my God, Elon, you're a fucking renaissance man. Incredible. Wow. How did you do this? But, yeah, uh, this uh, is all, all confusing and stupid. Uh, yeah. So, look, I guess we should start. What are NFTs? Well, not again. No, just kidding. Uh, Elon, he produced an EDM track and commissioned some of uh, some animated 3D artwork for it and then uploaded that to Twitter.com and added the following statement. I'm selling this song about NFTs as an NFT. Oh, it was so funny, too. In the replies, a bunch of other, like, clout-chasing electronic artists were like, hey, Elon, actually, I'm the first person to sell an NFT as a song. And it's like, Elon didn't even claim to be the first to do it, but a bunch of other people got, like, really, like, personally, like, they felt like Elon Musk was stealing their idea of selling a song about NFTs as an NFT. It was just like, fuck all of you. Fuck all of you. And then, and then of course, also in the replies, just the scam is still going. People uh, pretending... To be Elon Musk and be like, hey, I'm giving away all this. Oh, the Bitcoin scam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. People, the, it's, Elon dot Musk or it's whatever. It's been like five years and the fucking Elon Musk Bitcoin scam is still going, which I means just, people are still following. Follow I love the it. idea of a bunch of like uh, DJs setting their Teslas on fire the same way old white people set their Nikes on fire. That's it. I've had enough. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> anyway, so uh, the lyrics to this new Elon Musk track. Well, we're glad you asked. They include NFT for your vanity. Computers never sleep. It's verified. It's guaranteed. Wow. But again, the entire tweet is the NFT that he's selling in this scenario. And yes, it's already going for a ton of money. Mm -hmm. As of the time that we wrote this episode, the highest bid had reached just over a million dollars. 
But we regret to inform, and are thrilled to inform, yeah. uh, that uh, literally before we started filming, Elon Musk had an abrupt change of heart and decided to halt the sale of his NFT song about NFTs after a 24-hour media blitz and multiple large bids attempting to own this artwork. Saying in a follow-up tweet posted late Tuesday, actually doesn't feel quite right selling this. We'll pass. <laughs> you okay. know what? Wow. Might not always agree with you, sir, but uh, this was. It right took call, him a while to get there, but he got there. I mean, yeah. he went through the entire creation process. Well, especially produced for, the song for this guy. Like his his literally sell, the his, mother of one of his children did her own NFT release two three weeks ago. Yeah, that's so true. he's been through all of this. Yeah. And then, like, something happened in the past 24 hours. Wait, wait it's probably a bad look as the uh, the face of a car company that's uh, ostensibly trying to save the Earth through, like... Uh, and solar panels. Yeah, and, uh, probably not a great look to get involved in uh, this NFT shit, but I don't know, whatever it was. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyway, as of when we filmed this, he hasn't followed up with any reasoning as to why, but this seems to be a first in the crypto world for Elon. Uh, Tesla owns a bunch of Bitcoin. Elon's constantly pumping up Doge online. Uh, but this one FT NFT is somehow different, and he, he has decided to stop the sale of it. Yeah. I guess we'll see. Look, I don't know. Whatever. Um, Jack sold his first tweet, and he donated uh, all the money to charity, which is good. There you okay, go. Um, but yeah, I don't know what, what the abrupt change of heart and how it would dif be different from Bitcoin or Doge, which he is still seemingly fully behind. Well, those are at least currencies. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I, 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 don't I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he'll explain it. Uh, anyways, that's not the only futurism shit that uh, Elon got up to at the start of this week. Uh, he must, in my mind, he had a wild and crazy weekend. And it all came to a head on Monday when he decided to release an NFT and do this. Uh, on the same day that he announced his now short-lived foray into the world of crypto art, he also announced some new titles at Tesla in a filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Elon Musk will apparently now be known as the Techno King. Oh, fuck off. The Techno no. King of Tesla. No, shut up. And, uh, and the company's chief financial officer, Zach Kirkhorn, uh, will now officially go by Master of Coin. Fuck you. No. No. Uh, I mean, yeah, this is this is stupid, but also who cares, I guess. It, it, unless it somehow gives Elon the abil ability to navigate through certain loopholes with the SEC because he's just a made-up title like Techno King. But it looks like he's still listed as CEO. So it doesn't really matter. I, I, it's just like, hey, I'm the techno king. Yeah. Sorry, SEC. There's nothing in the rule book that says the techno king of a company can't uh, do, pump Dogecoin. Can't pump Dogecoin on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, I, I, okay. I, I, I don't know what it like. Is it just trolling the SEC? I, uh, I don't know. Is it the same on the same thing of like, yeah, I'm a uh, ordained minister. I can marry you because I got the form online. It says so. Like, yeah, I forever am known as the techno king, Elon Musk. Well, it's cool that he's doing this because now, I mean, if if you're ever hiring for a job on uh, ZipRecruiter or whatever, you can add Techno King as a term in your search to be able to just omit all results containing uh, Techno King on anyone's resume. I don't yeah. want to hire the, anyone who would do this because you know there's going to be a ton of people who are like, uh, c c c c can you change my job title to Techno King? Mm -hmm. <laughs> can, I, can I put that on my resume? I'm They're sure going to do it. The same DJ that complained about his NFT was in the mentions like, well, I'm the drum and bass prince. Uh, yeah, well, hey, look, all things considered, uh, you know, it's been a, a, a perfect week for monarchies in the past week and a half or so. Yeah. So why not jump on the train? Prince Philip's alive, by the way. Yeah, he's alive. Supposedly. And he got carted home. Supposedly. Yeah. I still am not convinced he's not like just a mummified dead guy that they're wheeling around. They, like, they got a lot of pictures of him sitting over. in the back seat, but not walking out in the, back into the house. He looks like uh, there's a, this shot in Ghostbusters where like there's a cab driver who's a ghost and he like, yeah. turns the camera. That's what Prince Philip looks like. Mm -hmm. Like identical. He cracks his fingers and dust comes out. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, yeah. <laughs> Look, to me, Elon had a pretty fun weekend and then uh, yeah. all of his crazy ideas came to fruition on Monday. So uh, I can't wait to see what's next. Great stuff. Anyway, that brings us to the wet-ass pussy at the goddamn Grammy Awards. How dare my kids watch this? My non-existent kids. Yes, yes, the Grammy Awards. Every young child's favorite program featuring the corporate music world patting themselves on the back and giving each other awards. Son, kids, what would you like to watch tonight? Kids. The Grammys. Love it. To be fair, the only reason to watch the Grammys is for the live musical performances, unless you enjoy being frustrated that thousands of more deserving artists will never get the recognition they deserve. The weekend got zero nominations. 
Yeah. The fuck? It doesn't make any sense. I'm last year, it, look, not, I'm not trying to be a fucking snooty music snob or whatever, but last year was one of the best years for music. Yeah. All things considered, with everything else that was going around uh, or going on, the lack of actual live concerts and everything, the music that was produced and put out last year, phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, there was there was some cool stuff here. Black Pumas got to play. Um, Pumas. Pumas. Uh, but yeah, they they were great. Uh, but yeah, it's yeah. like the awards are dumb at the Grammys, but it's still it's a production. There's performances. Yeah, it's, it's cool gonna be to fun see. to yeah. watch. Mm-hmm. It's a nice way to revisit the past year in popular music, and uh, one of if not the most popular songs of last year, and I'd say the most infamous song of last year mm-hmm. was "Wet Ass P Word" <laughs> by Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion. There might now, be an issue there. Let's say hypothetically, your wife has the driest pussy on the face of the earth. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely going to be a, a performance of that song at the 2021 Grammys. Time to put the kids to bed. Mm-hmm. I wonder if they're going to do the kids' bop version. Well, I mean, they kind of did. They said, uh, what was it, wet ass kid, wet, kid, wet kid, and kid. gushy, I think wet is and gushy. The, the radio version. Yeah. Which sounds almost grosser to me. They're talking about Gushers fruit snacks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, unsurprisingly, despite what happened on stage, no one watched the Grammys, and this year was another in a long line of ratings dives that this and pretty much every other award show has taken over the past couple of years. Uh, it looks like around 8 million people watched the 63rd Annual Grammy Awards, Ooh. which is uh, not a lot if for some reason you thought that was a lot. But uh, the real ratings boost, it came after everything was said and done and all the awards were passed out because what followed was more round-the-clock outrage. Uh, from Fox News, and specifically Tucker Carlson, who repeatedly, repeatedly showed clips of the Cardi B performance to his viewers, bringing so much more attention to it's it. It's disgusting. Play that clip again. <laughs> Zoom in. Play it and, again. And you're saying, what, what, Slow it what down. are these lyrics again? Slow hmm. it down. You see that there? Degeneracy. Yeah, get, take a good, play it again. Take a good look at that. That's a stripper pole on the back of a t- of one of those high heels right there. Look at those cheeks just flapping up and down and around and around. Those ladies went ass to ass. Show it and again. I, show it again one more time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So look, Tucker Carlson showing this on his show gave it way more viewership, way more attention than I it love, ever would have gotten otherwise. This has been a cycle that has been going on since the mid 1980s. It never goes away. No one ever learns from it. It's like, you go to back to like early fucking rap music. It was the same shit. Yeah. It was a very pretty, like, otherwise niche genre of music that got massive exposure because old white conservatives just like couldn't stand Not the just, fact that people were Wasn't into it like Tipper Gore, though, that fucking... Well, uh, yeah, like I said, old white conservatives. Well, okay. Uh, this it, it, music overall, especially like metal music, seems to be one of the things that can cross the aisle to where uh, both... Uh, predominantly the older members of each party. Yes. Absolutely fucking hate it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, what I'm saying, like, Tipper Gar, social conservative by, like, yeah. every definition. Yeah. Uh, but look, it was a, it was truly a gift to see uh, wonderful Chirons at the bottom of the screen like this one. Heroic, brave, iconic, left can't get enough of gross, wet-ass pussy song. So, I mean, great job to Tucker for bringing this to everyone's attention. Um, Did he have a little... A little face in the oh, corner. Oh, the reaction thing? He, he he always has this this face when he's watching stuff like he's like he really confused like an by old it. man that just like woke up from a fugue state like Yeah. It it like in the movie Speed where they just get like 10 seconds of footage and repeat it. Mm. You could believably put Tucker reacting to something on a loop and no one would know the difference between that and a live reaction because yeah. his reaction is exactly the same no matter what he's looking at. Mm. All he needs like is a pair of glasses to put on when he does it, too. Like when you hand an old person a phone. What is this? Yeah, Anyways, uh, the culture yeah. war continues on. Next thing you know, Tucker Carlson's going to rediscover metal music and start up another satanic panic. Uh, it's all turning out to be that way. Um, that would actually be great, though, because it might bring some attention back to rock music and bring it back into the mainstream consciousness. At where the it's... cost of sending teenagers to prison for the rest of their life for yeah. crimes they didn't commit. Exactly. That's the part of the satanic panic people might forget is it had real world consequence it ruined people's lives yes yeah but yeah it would be cool to have uh, a little metal revival minus the life ruining stuff yeah pretty much rock music in the past uh, couple of years at least in the mainstream has been only used to sell jeeps yeah and uh 
credit cards and uh, in a lot of ways, Jeremy Renner is the biggest rock star today. Prolific. <laughs> yeah, him and Imagine Dragons, which yeah. sound exactly the same. Yeah, they're both at the top they of their just game. Just combine forces. I'm surprised they didn't put Jeremy Renner on the Grammys. Yeah, he could have came out in a Jeep. I guess that was like two stage. years ago now. I don't know. Yeah, yeah time flies. Maybe. Anyways, don't get us wrong. Uh, the heavy mu- music that's coming out right now, some of the best ever made. But parents, they're just not scared of it anymore. They're scared of wet vaginas. Yeah. So someone send Tucker the new Gojira album when it drops next month. I'm sure he'll love it. Put it on the show. It's great stuff. Anyway, if you want more stuff to watch that will anger and scare your parents, check out our most recent episodes over here. Actually, uh, hold on. Before you do any of that, yes. pull out your old calendar, your old date book, write this down. Live stream. Tomorrow slash today, Wednesday. Whenever Which you're out? watching this. Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday. St. Patrick's Saint Day. St. Patty's Day 2021. 2 p.m. Pacific. Pacific. Daylight time. Whatever. 2 p.m. Whatever. Pacific. 3 p.m. Wait, no. Sorry. I'm confusing people now. 2 p.m. Pacific is 5 p.m. Eastern. East. I don't know what time it is in London. If in London, that would, it'd be pretty late, but you're going to be there. Uh, we got special guests. You know them. You love them. They'll be there. Yeah. We're uh, we're pretty much just going to be talking about everything that's happened over the past year and uh, reminiscing a little bit and just hanging out with you on St. Patrick's Day, enjoying the holiday. Yeah. I think uh, Dropkick Murphys is playing again, but I don't know if they're doing it for free this time. Oh. So, well. anyways, uh, go to the. We'll leave a link. It'll be the top comment here. It'll also be in the description. Go to that link. Set a reminder, and we'll see you there. Today-ish, tomorrow, Wednesday, 2 p.m. Pacific. Uh, In the meantime, though, hey, plenty of stuff to watch right here. New Weekly Weird News, new news dump. Don't show your parents. They'll get angry. Parents just don't understand. They don't. You're moving with your auntie and your uncle to Bel Air. Bye.